my head about what it was like to live in a wheelchair or with a disability. Had I let that define me, I would not be here today, that's for sure. I didn't let that define who I was gonna be. I think also another thing I've learned is that the things that are the hardest to attain, those are the things that are gonna mean the most to you. Those are the things that truly give you power. So if you are going through something difficult right now, if you feel like perhaps being here at JC, if you feel like you're never gonna go somewhere, if you feel like you're stuck, I think we've all been there. But if you're going through something difficult or, or it's a tough journey or tough situation in your family, know that you can get through it. And once you get through it, that will empower you because you could have quit and you didn't. So my advice to all of you is stick with it. I don't care how old you are. This, is, was, this was not just for young students. Whatever it is that you want to do, we all have dreams and goals in life. Just because now you are a mom or a parent, that doesn't mean you as yourself as an individual, that doesn't mean you no longer exist. You still have dreams and goals and you should still do them and you should still do your best to accomplish them. And let the difficult situations bring you to another level. Let that make you a better person and empower you. For any young people, it's really important. Know where you are going in life. I knew what, when I came to this country, I knew what I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to do better for myself. And I knew I wanted, for myself, I wanted an education and I wanted to go to college. That was my biggest dream ever since I could remember. And I remember one of the, this was kind of a funny story when I learned about it. One of the first things I said when I was able to speak, just to give you a little bit more background on that, at first I was hooked to the ventilator. Then when my lungs started to, um, I guess, get stronger, they would put a plug and, and so I was able to speak for like brief periods of time. And that was, yeah, that sucked having to, to do that. But it was also, those moments were precious because then I didn't have to worry about just moving my mouth and people didn't understand me. And then I couldn't write things because they had to reconstruct my shoulder. So I, I really honestly could not communicate in a time that was so, difficult and vital. I didn't even know what had happened in my accident and I was trying to make sense of it. I had a tube in my mouth. I'm trying to like ask people like what happened and then people would say write it. I couldn't write. So it was really tough. But one of the first things I said when when they put the plug, I told my mom and my um, godmother, I told them, but don't worry, I'm going to go back to school and I'm going to graduate. And mind you, I was hooked up to all these machines. And they said, I mean, they looked at the scenario and they're just thinking like, oh my God. Like, they said they were just thinking like, oh, she doesn't know like what's happening. Or she doesn't know what she's talking about. And I tell them now, no, you guys didn't know. Like, I knew what I was gonna do. It's another story that you didn't think I could do it, but I knew what I was gonna do. And honestly, like I always knew I was gonna go back to college and I was gonna graduate. I didn't know how I was gonna do it. I didn't know when. I didn't have all these answers because I had no clue what I was about to face, but I just knew I was gonna do it. And that's the attitude that you all have to have. Whatever dream or goal you have, stick with it. Don't give up on it. Just know where you are going, have that vision, and just keep working. So I went, then uh, after I recovered, I also had my plan. I was thinking as soon as I go back, get home from the hospital, I'm going to learn how to drive. I'm going to drive with hand controls and I'm going to go back to school. Yeah, okay, that plan didn't work out. I was thinking I was going to enroll the next semester. It took me two years. And it took me two years because I had so many medical complications after the accident. And, and that was just so tough. I remember thinking, oh my God, like, do I deserve this? All these thoughts that really don't help us. 
And to some extent, I, at times, I kind of victimize myself. Like, I'm already in a wheelchair, already this. I'm trying to do something positive. Like, help me out here. And it was frustrating because a lot of my girlfriends were close to graduating. Then they graduated. And I had always been one of the ones that was on the, you know, on top of my game and ahead. Next thing you know, I was far from that goal. But I just never gave up on it. And I just knew I would do it. And it was not easy at first. I didn't have a car, so I had to rely on public transportation. And anybody who is in a wheelchair and has to rely on public transportation or just other people, it's frustrating because at one point you were able to come and go as you please. Now you can't even do those simple things. And it can be, it was challenging, but I just, stuck with it so i went back to mjc and i finished the because i was half through a semester when i was at costa mesa so i had to redo that semester and i graduated from mjc with honors and then i transferred to san state and public speaking be started out very little i I love this picture because I went to um, I went to a school and it was an elementary and they had done this for me. So I just started to share my story, just wanting to raise awareness, to educate people, to tell kids you can do whatever you want and you can move forward in life and don't let anybody limit you. And it just started growing. So I went back to to, to college and I transferred to. Um, CSU Santa's Laws to study communication. And I chose communication because of this experience that I went through. I was studying international business before, and I didn't see myself doing any whatsoever of what I'm doing now. I had no clue that that would become my life. It's crazy to think about where I was at one point and where I am now. But because I really appreciated my ability to speak, and then I started to share my story and I saw the impact it had on people, I, that's when I said, I want to be a motivational speaker. But I want to get my education. I want to have a degree. I want people to know, I guess, I worked, I've worked hard. Um, and I just, it was just a goal for myself, not just that. It was that goal that, that I always had and I just wanted to fulfill it. So after many hospitalizations, after I, was, after I came home I, and, I, and I enrolled back in school, there were a couple semesters that I had to be in ICU. I remember twice I had to be in ICU for a week and I still graduated with the highest honors. I, re I received many awards and many of them that I will always cherish. When I graduated the communication field, they, cho they always choose one person. And my classmates, my fellow classmates, many of them were amazing. So to have been chosen as um, the comm major graduate to be selected for this award was just awesome. And then also the, this, the university awarded me with one of the highest recognitions. And, and actually, you can, if you are interested in watching this, I, I became the first commencement speaker at CSU Stanislaus in a wheelchair. It was a, it's a competition, and I just submitted my speech. And then I had to come and present my speech in front of an, um, you know, professors. And I start asking them, OK, what is your setup for somebody in a wheelchair? And they're like, oh, we've never had anybody. And I was like, OK, you should start thinking about that, because I might be the speaker. And that was really nice. I became, they chose me as a speaker. And the day I graduated with all these awards was just one of the best days of my life. And so I gave a speech to, in front of 10,000 people. And that graduation speech is on YouTube. You could probably just Google my name and my graduation video, and it'll come up. But that was really powerful to be able to just speak in front of that many people and to break a barrier such as being the first commencement speaker in a wheelchair. That was very powerful.
very powerful. And there again, my family, their support was just meant so much to me. Being able to get off the stage and see everybody there. It took me, I'm not kidding you, it took me over an hour to get back to my family because I kept getting stopped and people saying, I loved your speech. And, and I mean, I'll take it. It was awesome getting to hear all that feedback. But yeah, they were just there patiently waiting for an hour so I could come take a picture with everybody. <coughs> and so modeling, I mentioned I, I did some modeling before my accident. And that's, a, that's, I guess, a chapter that I retook a little bit after, especially after I graduated. And it's, it's so wild, to seriously, you guys, to know that I've been on a few different runways as a person who is 5'2". It's crazy, but that's just what happens when you don't limit yourself and you believe in opportunities. I never would have thought I would be on a runway because before my accident, I never would have made it on a runway. I just didn't have the profile of a runway model. I don't really consider myself a runway model, but I know now in my wheelchair, I've been able to be on a few runways. So it's just, it's powerful. And I just share all this so you don't limit yourself. Sometimes you think, your life is over. Well, it, it maybe it's just it just restarted, and it's a chapter that you never would have thought it would happen. So I feel blessed. Whether I'm sitting down in a regular chair, whether I'm in my chair, I'm proud of the person that I am. And you should always be proud, no matter how different, no matter what your limitations can be. Use those to show people everything that you can do. So after I majored in communication, I graduated. I was on a few different TV shows, just a few to mention. And it is while being on these TV shows and sharing my story and motivating, I started to, I just realized I liked it. I, I didn't mind being in front of the cameras. I had people telling me, oh, I loved your appearance on here. You did great, X, Y, and Z. And Hearing people tell me that they liked whatever appearance that I had done, that meant more. And then I, and people started to say, you should think about doing something on TV or maybe, you know, just, just be in that field, broadcasting. I never would have thought about that, though, before my accident. I'm just showing you so it all makes sense how I even thought about perhaps hosting or becoming a host. So I started to do a few projects with some friends co-hosting, and I liked it. And I know I knew of this one show. Anybody um, Latinos, you might you might know of the show. It's a really big show, Nuestra Belleza Latina, and it was the first time that they were going to come to San Jose. And this is basically a beauty pageant slash reality TV show. And the winner. It, it is a pageant, so it's based off of beauty, but the winner works on TV. Basically, the winner becomes a host, and I already knew I liked it. And I would always watch this show after I became paralyzed. And I would always think, oh, you know, if I wasn't in a chair, I would be there. And I would have. I would have probably gone to one of their castings. But, and I would always think, it's not for me, like, not at all, not anymore. Well, one year when I when they were coming to San Jose, I thought, what if I go? And then I was thinking, oh my God, no, you're crazy. Like, no, it's this, no, or or maybe next year. Then you know, fear started to to kind of come over me, and I was thinking, oh, I'll just do it next year. Uh, I'll get ready. I'm not ready. I'm not in shape. I'm not excuses, right? And then I was already giving motivational talks. And I said, you know what? I called myself out. And I said, OK, practice what you preach. What do you tell people? And not to limit themselves, to, to just to go after challenges, to try it, to, to just give it a shot. And so I said, well, that's what I got to do. I showed up. And it's not this stage, but I showed up to, to the casting and 
People were so confused. Uh, I wish I could show you guys their faces. They're just thinking like, what is this girl doing here? Like everybody's able-bodied. All these like beautiful girls, short dresses. Everyone's like looking good. And I tried my best too, but I'm in a wheelchair. So everyone's kind of like, okay, this girl, what's she, what she doing here? The producers were shocked when I rolled into the room. And all I can say is I just went in believing that I could do it. That, that you got to have that attitude, not, not arrogance, just confident enough knowing that I, why not? And I was just there to challenge them. I didn't even know if they were going to, I thought maybe they were going to turn me down because I'm in a wheelchair, but I'm going to try to see if they can open up their mind and maybe in the future they'll consider, you know, allowing people with disabilities. Long story short, I auditioned out of 200 35 of us were chosen first and so many girls were looking at me like, like Wait, like she she made it and I just kept believing in myself and round after round I kept placing so out of 206 of us were chosen and In San Jose and out of thousands literally thousands that audition all over the US 70 of us made it to Miami so I made it to Miami and it was crazy because I, I missed my flight. I almost missed my audition altogether. Uh, I just remember I had so many emotions when I finally got there and I was able to, to, to do my audition. And my talent was hosting. And I started behind a desk. And I, I was very active in this layout. I told the producers, I don't want... I want them to judge me based on talent. So they said, okay, you can start, you can basically not reveal the wheelchair right away, or you can just show the wheelchair right away. And then he said, which card are you gonna play? Are you gonna use the card of, I'm in a wheelchair, like maybe feel sorry for me, or are you gonna show your talent? I think he already knew what I was gonna tell him. I said, no, I'm, I, I'm gonna show my talent. So I. I'm gonna start behind a desk so that they really judge me based on what my my audition and then so that's what I did and then I revealed the wheelchair and they were shocked. Their faces are just thinking like, what is this girl doing here? Is she really in a wheelchair? Like they had no clue. They had never seen anybody with a disability. Nobody with a disability had ever even auditioned, much less make it in the competition. And Here's just a few more photos of it. It was a huge barrier I broke, but sadly, the, the industry was not ready. They were not ready. The show was not ready to embrace differences. And I can honestly say that. I, they didn't, what aired on TV was edited, so some things were not in there, but one guy, one judge is like celebrity judges said yes and two and two said no. And what was frustrating is that they complimented me on my ability as a communicator. So talent was there. Even the guy, it's like the Simon Cowell that is like the mean guy. Osmel, he even said really nice things in terms of beauty. But I was still, this is how I felt, I was still not good enough to make it because I had a disability. And really that is the only reason that stopped me from going forward in the competition because I, because of my physical condition. And I told them, I don't want a free pass. They do physical challenges. Just let me do them the way I do them. Let me do them with my arms. Obviously uh, they weren't open, they weren't ready for it and so so they said no, and when I got off the stage, I remember being devastated. I just burst out in tears because it had been so hard to get there. I, I almost missed the flight. Like just physically, it was just so much. It's not easy being in a wheelchair. And I just felt like it's not, it still was not good enough. And, but then, you know, I, the, it's all in perspective. And I was like, no, it's a huge goal. It's a huge barrier. I broke a barrier 
The next day, I was on all the major TV shows and everybody was talking about my, my audition. I remember thinking, oh my God, they're talking about me. Wait, shut up. And, um, and they were talking about it positively, like saying, this girl should have made it. And it's just a life that I, I get to live now. But what matters is not giving up. Some people were so cruel online. Some of the things that they said just blew me away. And a couple times, some of those comments really got to me. And I, I remember I cried once, like, oh, my God, these, I can't believe people can be so cruel. But at the end of the day, it's all in perspective. There's always going to be those negative people, those people who are going to judge you, put you down. And those people, they are just projecting their own insecurities. So don't let anybody limit you. You only know what you are capable of. To have made it from Modesto out of all those girls and you know despite my circumstances that is huge and it's okay they weren't ready for it but I did it and so I didn't give up and I just love this picture because I just moved forward and kept enjoying life and and just trying to focus on what I had and if something doesn't work out I'm always the type of person that will say well, I'll try it. A ver si pega. Si pega bueno, si no, pues también. That's just the attitude. If it works out, it works out. And if not, at least I tried. I don't want to live with regrets. I don't want to know what if. And I encourage you, all of you, because I know we all have dreams. We all have things we want to do. But we always let fear and doubt a lot of times stop us. The biggest limitations are those mental limitations. And a lot of times, yes, it's by people you're, who might limit you, but a lot of times it's not even other people. It's you. You're not even allowing yourself to get there. You are limiting yourself before you even know what you are capable of. So that's why I said, don't let anyone limit you, not even yourself. I think I put it in another slide, but... Yeah, the biggest limitations are the ones that are in our minds. Up at the end of the day, you have to be your, your biggest advocate. You have to believe in yourself. In order for other people to believe in you, you have to believe in yourself. So I moved forward after Nuestra Visa Latina. I said, okay, that was, okay, good chapter. It what didn't work out. I want it, so what? I, at least I tried it. And then I became an ambassador for Red Bull, and that was pretty cool. It's a, it's a run. It's called Wings for Life World Run, and it's a run that happens in 35 different locations around the world, and they are all at the same time. And I came on board as an ambassador, especially because I speak English and Spanish fluently, and they wanted somebody who could... Um, share what it's like to be in a wheelchair because this this run raises funds for spinal cord injury research and they needed somebody who could speak Spanish so anybody here who has the ability to speak Spanish or who can improve on it keep it up I can't even say how many opportunities have happened to me because I speak both languages so don't never always be proud of your roots and and be proud and and keep that language alive so that was 